Network. This is Morning Line. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a Wednesday. We have a good show on tap for you. It's an interesting topic, something that maybe you all are aware of. You see the commercials for it. Maybe you know someone that's used one of these services, or maybe you've used it yourself, and it's now at the heart of some legislation looking to maybe place some limits on how they do payday lending, um, you know, where you can go get fast cash you know the interest rates that are involved all of that and to be honest with you as opposed to me continuing to talk about it because I've not used one of these services though I'm aware of it I'm gonna move to our guests and we're gonna get into the heart of this and we're gonna take your phone calls once we kind of set the stage for you here and uh, give you the background to call and tell us what you think about it but uh, to talk about the issue we've got two folks with uh, different points of view on this with us is Colin Ernest Colin you're a spokesman and lobbyist I guess for advanced financial right Which that's is, correct is that one of the biggest Sure, yeah. So Advanced Financial is uh, probably the leading neighborhood financial services provider in Middle Tennessee and East Tennessee. Okay. Um, we, uh, we employ about 700 people in the area. We're headquartered right here in Nashville, just a few blocks away down the street. Um, we do all kinds of different transactions, not just payday lending. We do title lending, check cashing, uh, installment loans, money orders, bill pay. So re really, we're a full service financial institution with payday lending as one of the products that we do. Okay. And I'm going to give you a moment here to give us an example of what a typical transaction may be and how it works. But also with us this morning is Representative Darren Jernigan. Nice to have you on, sir. Thank you. It's good to see you. And uh, you have a uh, piece of legislation right now pending at the state capitol. And, uh, just give us a little bit about what that's that's asking for. Well, the legislation it, it is constituent driven. I, I came from my neighborhood and from my local chamber of commerce, and what it does is it caps the interest rate that would be on these payday lending uh, loans to 28 percent. And so, what it is is we're we're trying to find a number that would not have individuals that go in to get a payday loan to enter a cycle of debt that they cannot get out of. Mm -hmm. And we believe the average uh, percentage rate of 375% is just a little too high. And we're looking for a number to bring that down. And typically in your mind, who is it that uses these types of services, these businesses? I I'm guessing it's people that maybe don't have the best credit in the world. So is that part of it? And I'll let you answer that as well. I've never used one, okay? I don't like the idea of paying a huge interest rate, but sometimes if you have lousy credit, that's part of the price you pay is higher sure. credit. Oh, you know, and I get that. I understand that's why my legislation doesn't ban it mm -hmm. altogether. The service is needed. I get that. Uh, the banks are not always available for these type of individuals. But when you go in, you also don't want to exploit those individuals that are in a situation mm -hmm. that, that they need quick money. And so, so those are the ones that we're, we're trying to, to protect, I guess, that are going in and, uh, and, and getting these payday loans or title loans as well. Gotcha. Okay. And again, we, we all see the ads for them. I, I suspect an awful lot of people use these. Colin, if you can, then, kind of lay it out and you can touch bases on what he just said in terms of he's concerned with what he perceives to be very high interest rates, sometimes associated with some of these transactions. Can you give me an example um, of what a typical transaction may be on a payday loan? If someone comes in, just how it works. Is it a two-week cycle? Talk a little bit sure, about when someone yeah. comes in. So the most important thing to remember is that a payday loan is a short-term loan. Okay. Payday loans are written for typically two weeks or 30 days. All right. And what, what happens is the person comes in and bar, borrows a set amount of money and pays a one-time fee on that set amount of money. So for instance, if someone came in and wanted to borrow $100, they would pay a one-time fee of about 17 bucks on that on that money. Okay. Uh, now, the what, what people consider as APR, you know, once it, to, to the definition of annual percentage rate mm -hmm. does not apply in this instance to a payday loan because a payday loan is a one-time fee. If you were to come in and borrow a hundred dollars um, and two weeks later that fee was due mm. uh, you, you you would owe the 17 bucks so you owe hundred and seventeen dollars back two weeks later yeah so so here's an example you you needed to borrow a hundred dollars you come in you'd write me a check for hundred and seventeen dollars and sixty five cents I'd give you a hundred dollars in fact in cash so on your next payday you would come back in and you would bring me a hundred dollars and seven or a hundred $17.65, and then I would tear your check up. Tear up the check. Now, what if I 
don't make the payment on time? That's a good question. So, so if you came in a day late to pay your bill off, uh, I cannot legally charge you a dollar more. So, and if you came in a week late, I cannot legally charge you a dollar more. If you came in three months late, I cannot legally charge you a dollar more. So state law prohibits us from charging overdraft fees and there's no compounding interest on this loan. So, but you don't get any more if I'm late? If it's three weeks late, three months late, then the day it's due? That's correct. So so we are, payday lenders are licensed and regulated by the State Department of Financial Institutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Department of Financial Institutions has examiners that go out and examine these products. So, so Advanced Financial has literally hundreds of licenses through the Department of Financial Institutions. And what they do is they follow the letter of the law that the payday law has been on the books for about 20 years. And the examiners come into my store, check all, you know, check to make sure all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, and to make sure that I'm not charging anybody a penny more than okay, I'm allowed Okay, I guess then where I, I just need to understand that if that's the case, then why do you object to a 28% cap? 28% seems like pretty good chunk of interest there. So why do you object to a cap? Sure, so, so the, since it is a one-time fee, and mm -hmm. I'm letting you borrow $100 for, and pay that $17 fee on it, a 28% a cap on that would bring that fee down to about a dollar and eight cents. Well, wait a second, now, $17 is up 100, isn't that 17%? N no, and I mean, if, I'm, if, I'm not understanding if, if, how this so, breaks out. So, if the, the math works, is if you came in every two weeks and borrowed a hundred dollars. Every two weeks. Right. If you came in every two weeks, so 26 times a year. Okay. If you came in 26 times a year every two weeks and borrowed a hundred dollars and then paid that $17 fee on top mm -hmm. of it, that's the only way to get to that inflated interest rate. Does anyone do that? Uh, I mean, I, are there people Every that weeks? Are, are there people that abuse these products? Absolutely. Same way that people abuse credit cards. Same way that, that people abuse any type of financial product. Definitely. The uh, the statistics say that the average payday loan borrower borrows between eight and six times a year, okay. which is lower than most people who are using overdraft as a form of credit. Representative, well, I mean, the, if you look at the Pew study, or if you look at uh, depending on which one you look at, 50 to 75 percent of the people are doing it every week. And so that's where it starts to get up. How they get in this cycle of debt? Mm -hmm. The cycle, they just they can't get out of it. And then you're looking at the point, I don't know what the number is. 28% is what I came up with. And if you want to look between 28% and 375%, where's the number that's in there? Because, you know, they're a hundred million dollar company mm -hmm. based and you're looking at these are people that they're mm -hmm. poor people. And so you're, we're looking at a point to where, okay, what is the number where we can still have the services for these individuals and then get to a point to where they can get out of a cycle of debt. They can go out and have a meal. I would argue, and what the Chamber of Commerce argued, is that these people, if they can get out of this cycle of debt, they start spending money elsewhere in the community. They can go out to dinner or they can start spending at other businesses and maybe those folks hire people at that point but just going to one place every week to pay it, we're just trying to get them out of that cycle of debt I don't know how to get them out of the cycle of debt I'm trying to figure that out myself I, mm -hmm. I thought lowering the interest rate would be a first good start yeah I mean you, you hear about cycle of debt it's not just as you said people that use credit cards as well they can maybe use these services like a credit card almost um, is, is there a concern uh, as I've been doing some of the research that if a caps put in place you won't have a large enough mar profit margin to survive yeah, I mean, that's, uh, there's no doubt about it. If, if, if I was only allowed to charge $1.08 for somebody to come in and borrow $100 for two weeks, you know, I, 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 I wouldn't even be able to keep my lights on, much less, you know, we provide a lot of, you know, like I said, we employ 700 people in the mid-state area. Uh, you know, these are people who are $12.50 an hour starting pay. The average of our frontline employee is $14.50. Okay, but hang on, because here's the thing, and I'm, I'm dense on this stuff when it comes to numbers, guys, so you're going to have to spell this out. Is that what you're saying? Because I, I I don't, I don't know. Is, is what you're proposing going to limit them to a dollar something for a hundred bucks? I, I guess that would be for if they went one time. If it's but just the one sheer time. volume of people. I mean, I, and I've okay. asked, I've asked to open up your books. Tell me what the number is, because 375 percent is too much. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean. So if it was just a one-time thing, I see. But you have people that are repeat customers. Wouldn't doesn't that you know keep it going for you? Yeah, or? I mean, like I said, there are going to be people that abuse 
any type of product. But the overwhelming majority of people, this, you know, the studies that, that I've seen is between six and eight times a year. Now, uh, the, the st I've also seen studies that people who use overdraft fees as a form of credit um, uh, use those considerably more than they do payday loans. And so, so, your, so your real example here is if, if, if it's a Monday and you've got $40 in your bank account and you don't get paid until Thursday night at midnight, you got a couple of choices. If your credit card is maxed out, you don't have a way to borrow money anywhere else, and you know that you've got to put some gas in your car, you've got to buy whatever prescription, you've got to put, you know, buy your kids something for school and uh, put some food on the table, you've got a couple of different choices. A lot of people will go, will they use their check card or debit card, and they'll run that card mm. all throughout the week, knowing there's there's nothing in the bank, and they get hit with a thirty-six dollar overdraft fee every single time. And so, some people choose to walk across the street to the payday lender, borrow two hundred dollars, and pay a one-time fee of thirty-five dollars instead. So, some of these people are making good decisions about their financial situation as opposed to using uh, what may be a much more expensive op option. Does that make sense to you? I mean, it, it, they have the options. One way or the other, they're getting hammered, you know, and you just think the interest rate is too high for them. The potential uh, is there. I think so. that they, they fall, and it forces, they, and you're saying that there are enough people that use it often enough that it just builds to the point where they get caught well, in this cycle of debt. I mean, debt. look at it. It's at yeah. every corner. Yeah. I mean, well, that's what I was going to say. There's, it, more, there's more now than there are McDonald's or Starbucks. These must be incredibly lucrative businesses. I, I don't Absolutely. know. I've not seen the books, but they must be incredibly lucrative because they are everywhere. The ads are everywhere on TV. Someone's making a lot of money on this stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think to me it's more about the need than it is to be incredibly lucrative. I, uh, you well, know. you have a right to make a profit. I mean, no one's saying you don't. Yeah, and, and, and you know, Representative Jernigan said, you know, that these are, are poor people. You know, I, I, would disagree, I, I would disagree with that, too. These are, these are working class people. I mean, I mean people with bad order, credit that have had yeah, credit issues. I mean, these are people, you know, in order to get a loan from us, obviously you have to have a job. I'll tell you that, um, you know, our average, someone sent this to me last night, our average customer that gets online and borrows an average of $350 from us, their average annual income is $43,000. So that is, this, these are not people that are living in poverty. These are people that are living from paycheck to paycheck. Now, Darren, uh, Representative uh, Jernigan and I have talked about it. You know, uh, it, it probably stems a lot from people not paying their employees livable wages. I mean, there, there is a responsibility on employers to pay their people good money, and some of these people are just stretched too thin. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, one of, the, uh, one of the things that comes up a lot in these conversations about, uh, uh, about payday lenders, one of the things that you may hear activists say a lot is, is well, you know, there's, uh, there's more payday lenders in this country than there are Starbucks and McDonald's combined, right? Well, the fact is, is that there's a huge need out there that's not being met. Yes, there are more payday lenders in this country than Starbucks and McDonald's combined, but there are 90, according to the FDIC, there are 94,000 mm -hmm. bank branches in this country. And those bank branches are not filling the need of these people who need a small, short-term form of credit. I got you. I just worry that some of these people, because they come to there, I assume to some degree they're feeling desperation, which opens up the potential, not that that's, that's debatable here, for to someone being taken advantage of where they have no choice but to go that route. Has this happened in other states, this type of regulation? I think, did Ohio do some similar yeah, types? Yeah, in other states, Colorado, Ohio, and, and North Carolina's banned altogether. When, okay, and, all right, aside from North Carolina, in these other states, it's when they uh, placed limits, did it put them out of business? Not that I know of. All right. Well, okay. We'll talk more about that. We're going to take a break. When we come back, the lines are open. We have calls on this. I imagine there's people with opinions on this, people who use it, people who maybe wonder about the interest rates. We'll take your phone calls, continue our conversation with our guests. You see the number on the screen there, by the way, 737-7587. More right after this. Stay with us.